Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video I'm going to take a look at possibly the best brew I have made during Boom's Day so far. It's Big Spell Mage. And I have had a ton of fun playing this deck. It's a great archetype and it's a little bit more different take than Big Spell Mage has traditionally been. Big Spell Mage has been this very very fatigue oriented deck that basically Waits for Jaina and then wins with Jaina. And you can still do that with this deck. But you can also do a couple of other things with this build. Starting with the obvious, this is a Kelaset build. So Prince Kelaset is the only 2-drop. This makes all your other minions a little bit bigger. And that enables them to contest the board better and also to be more aggressive. The sacrifices made for running Prince Kelaset are quite small. You lose Raven Familiar, you lose Doomsayer, and in practice you lose Voodoo Doll. Because Voodoo Doll getting buffed means that you can no longer ping it, so then it doesn't quite work as nicely. To make up for that loss of Voodoo Doll, this deck runs one Spellbreaker as a tech card. I found that just running those two copies of Polymorph, why they are very, very nice, wasn't quite enough to deal with all sorts of death rattles and stuff that there's currently available in the metagame, so adding in a Spellbreaker significantly improved the deck. For card draw, I'm also going for bigger things. No Acolytes of Pain, but Bright Eyed Scouts. So Bright Eyed Scout buffed with Kelaset, it's a Yeti. And also Bright Eyed Scout drawing one of the big ones at that costing 5 mana can just allow very very heavy tempo swings already early in the game. Keeping with the threat and tempo swing package, this deck runs all the major threats. There's Alana, there's Lich King, there's Syndragosa. And there's also a pair of Arcane Tyrants, so you can play a board clear spell and follow that up with dropping some free Tyrants on the board, much like Druids used to do. Other things that work nicely with Kelaset and with the idea here is there's Serena Chain Gangs and there's a couple of Arcane Keysmiths. Arcane Keysmith can give you secrets that the deck otherwise lacks and those can be the deciding factor in winning lots of games. You can do many surprising things with that and surprising your opponent is always good. And if you get the Kelaset buff on the Keysmith then you get a little bit better stat line as well. Another tech card that I've chosen to include in this deck is Blood Knight. Blood Knight is awesome in Big Spell Mage, because Giggling Inventor is so common and you want to get rid of that. And Big Spell Mage has a ton of removal, but all of it is damage based, so it doesn't work very well against Divine Shields. But when you can drop a Blood Knight, you get a big threat, and then you also make it possible for your AoE spells to wipe the opponent's board. Finally, perhaps a little bit controversial pick, there's Elise the Trailblazer in this deck. I wanted another big threat. I played with Baron Geddon and stuff and just didn't feel right. But Elise the Trailblazer can do the trick. Obviously, with this deck you don't want to play Elise early if you're planning to play Dragon's Furies, because Elise shuffles a 2 mana spell into your deck. But you might be able to do stuff like play Elise when you're in fatigue and then the Dragon's Fury is activated as a 2 damage AoE. Mm, kind of niche case really. But still that's possible. And otherwise when the game goes really long, Elise delays your fatigue and the pack gives you a bunch of new resources. So this deck has a lot more threats than most big spell mage decks do. And thanks to that it's able to pressure the opponents and also win the games to other means than fatigue. As for the mulligans with this deck, you are generally looking for Prince Kelaset, obviously. In most matchups you are looking for stuff like Bright Eyed Scout, Dragon's Fury, Serenite Chain Gang. And depending if you need weapon removal or if you expect Kickling Inventors, you can give stuff like Blood Knight, Gluttonous You rarely want to keep Artificers or Arcane Keysmiths in the mulligan. And then you can also sometimes go for keeping the Geist, keeping Jaina, if you know that this is going to be a slow matchup and you're going to need that value from those. Over the past couple of days, Token Druid has risen a lot in play, and it might be necessary to take in an Abomination into this deck to combat that, but it remains to be seen just what Token Druid builds will become common and how common they will be. 
This has been the most fun I've had in Boom's Day, and I hope you enjoy it too. And as always, I've prepared some gameplay material so you get to see how this deck performs in action and how it can pressure opponents in ways that old big spell mages just quite couldn't do. Well, warrior. So we can expect a slightly slower pace. If it's not quest warrior. Quest and Fatigue can both win me, right? Odd Warrior I should be fine against. I mean, Odd Warrior can mostly beat me with Boom. Sometimes with something else, but it's mostly Boom. Oh, but it, it is Quest Warrior. Odd Quest just, but Quest Warrior can beat me. Oh dear. Oh dear. He kept all the cards, so... Well, well except one. So have a pretty decent hand there. <laughs> These can't even get past that simple Tar Creeper, but... What can you do? I mean, I kind of have the option to silence the Tar Creeper and just try to start pushing, but somehow I don't feel like that's going to help me. I think I'm going for a Tyrant here. Let's see about this one. He's all chill and everything. I guess we, he still has the coin, so keysmithing Keysmitting a counter spell isn't very effective. Keysmitting mana bind probably gives me removal. What if I just spent the silence on the Tar Creeper and hit face a lot? Still unlikely to work, but. I think I'll give that a try. I'll give that a try and try to try to hit him in the face a lot here. Let's see. Let's apply a little bit of pressure and see what happens. Didn't play around mind control tech. Perhaps I should have. Good positioning with the minions too. I guess that's slightly inconvenient, but I just need to push. So he can't be too comfortable here. He's just chilling. What can even be in his hand? Reckless Flurry, coming down, yep, that's what it looked like, and I will respond with Syndragosa. I have not been able to remove the, I have not been able to remove the shield slams yet, I haven't found the Geist, so he can simply shield slam to Syndragosa, that's a downside. If I had found the guys, then this would not be possible. <laughs> Top deck shield slam too. But I feel like I have to apply pressure here. I feel that is my only only chance because he has the quest. So eventually he is going to get so much value from that quest. But he had both shield slams in top half of his deck. So I couldn't get value from Syndragos and Lich King. Unfortunate. What happens? I need to start pinging these to see what I can find. I probably do. Feels bad, man. Nat Pagel? Seriously? That's a dead card. 
if I can find... No, not these. I wanted to find the... I wanted to find Mirror Entity. This is not good. I could have tried to save this for... Well, probably not much to save that for. This is why I wanted to find the Entity, by the way. It was likely that he would play something here. Of value. Probably need to play the Artificer now. If I play the Artificer, I can't draw a card. I'm not going to draw a card. So, Artificer, Meteor. King down the stone hill. Try to hit face a little bit. I'll also commit the Tyrant. It's unlikely that he would run double mind control tech. But he's at 42. And I'm just about out of threats. He gives me a coin. That's nice. <laughs> and the frozen champion wins the brawl. Oh, that's hilarious. That truly is hilarious now, isn't it? I think we draw with the Bright Eyed Scout first. No, we managed to draw a 5 mana Jaina. And I guess I'm using this coin that he gave me to make another water elemental too. Dr. Morrigan, swap this with a minion from your deck. What's the next thing he can do? Now I found my Jaina. So flame strike, heat ping. Let's kill off that Baku. And then we start jamming some water elementals to the face. It's unlikely that they would be very helpful here, but sooner I was just about to say that sooner or later the Phantom Militia is going to show up. He has another Brawl left, he has another Flurry left. I don't want him to let him use weapons though. So what I want to do is Blizzard. No, I still can't. I still can't get a Border Elemental through the Blizzard. The quest is almost complete. He could have a King Mosh in that deck. I still have to just do this. And ping one of them into a water elemental again. But I guess we're setting up a secret. Entities, entity it is. Alright. Let's see. He has one brawl left. Here comes the brawl. After this there will be no brawls. And that's good. <laughs> the 2 2 wins. The only thing that can't freeze his face wins the brawl. How can the 2 2 win the brawl? How many big spells have I played? I played one Blizzard, one Flame Strike, two Meteors. He has a Reckless Flurry left. No brawls. So it's time to force that flurry. Let's get to see that flurry. We might not get to see the flurry, but maybe we get to see the flurry. Oh, we're not a phantom militia. All right, all right. The plot thickens. The 
A plot thickens indeed. So I have an option to flame strike and push 20 to face so that he can't use the reckless flurry. He has used both shield blocks. Or I can blizzard and give him a reckless flurry turn. I think I'm not giving him a reckless flurry turn. I just flame strike that board away and we push face. We're going face here. So, one reckless flurry for mass removal. Phantom militias are gone. He can't go wide. He does run double mind control tech. I did not expect him to run two. And there's a Ziliox. But now I can do the Blizzard. So with Blizzard here. And I can ping away that one. To make a water elemental and we push face. We're pushing, we're pushing. Come on. Can't get to five for these. Silence. Okay, so he can trade away five five. He can still armor up and hero power. And armor up and Now he doesn't have enough mana to do with the flurry. He's at 18. How much damage I have? I have 10, 15. I have 16 damage. Isn't quite enough now, is it? If I freeze his face, he cannot attack with a weapon. Or I can hit here and make another water elemental. I'm assuming I don't want to spend the polymorph yet. I think I'll take the hit here. He will get to spend to use the weapon. But I think this is still the line. These push face, I'm not giving him any armor. The time is now. I can play Keleset on this board. And I can play Elise on this board too. But now he can finally attack with the weapon if he chooses to, but can he afford to? He's at 11 health. He could do a Reckless Flurry now to clear most of these minions. But he chooses to die. Fabulous. Excellent, excellent news. This one we take. I'll try with something like this. Hunter is tough. Hunter is very, very tough. Hunter is a tier 1 deck right now. Hunter is probably the best deck in the game at the moment. As long as they can find the eggs, they are in such a great spot. And Leon, hi, I opened Dr. Boom the other day. Do you know of any cheaper dust decks with Dr. Boom? Unfortunately, no, because Warrior is in the terrible position that most important Warrior cards are epics. Brawls are epics. Shield slams are epics. E even the... Even the one mana one two is an epic. So it's just very, very hard to build any kind of cheap warrior deck because of the incredible amount of epics that you need to have in order to play any sort of slower warrior deck at least. I guess he's not going to have the egg. He doesn't have the egg. That is intriguing. I guess coining out something is to it's not good enough yet to coin. Nah, he does have the egg. Now nah, he'll top deck the egg, but yeah. Got the egg played at play on four. Which is kind of what he wants. So I'll pull him off the egg and then I'll Dragon's Fury the board next turn. Hoping for no cube this turn. Crafting legendaries break the bank for me. Yeah, warrior is just very, very expensive to play.
Yep, that's a Dragon's Fury turn. Anything but the Polymorph. I hit the one Polymorph in the deck. There were six other spells too, but I couldn't catch those. That that feels bad. One out of seven to hit the Polymorph and I, I did exactly that. Now I need some armor again. I just have to gain some armor here. I'm probably not even going to hit into the Grizzly. Because there's a chance that I flame strike next turn. If I want to get rid of play that I could also geist. That leaves him with a 3-3 on the board. If I had hit this one, I could have avoided that scenario. I'm at 70, I think I can take that damage. Let's geist so that I can also get rid of stuff like Hunter's marks. He's only running one play dead in that deck. But now we get to see if there's a Katrina in hand. There is no Katrina. That's an upside. Still taking a lot of beating here. I have to kill these minions and hope it's enough. He doesn't have a lot of cards. Maybe he can't find Katrina, King Crush, stuff like that. He finds another egg. That's tough. That's very, very tough. I need to kill the 5-5 five, five at least. Probably need to go with Chain Gang and Ooze. So I get 10, but I have to find Jaina very, very quickly, and he has to start whiffing. He has to start whiffing some draws here. If he doesn't whiff any draws, then I just can't do this. Well, that's a meteor, and that's a board clear. We're going for the board clear. So I hit here, and we hope that there's no King Crush or Katrina coming before I can draw something more. So I'll hit here, I'll ping here, I'll play the Kale Asset. And then I'll meet here. So we might also lose a 2 2, two, two instead of a 3 3. I'm dead to a King Crush. I'm probably dead to Katrina. So he had that King Crush in hand the whole time. I need an Artificer at some point. I need Jaina even more. I don't like this. Because Q block has can have multiple win conditions, but they're very synergetic with each other. So they can be used together very effectively. Whereas many other decks they just they just when you try to put in too much stuff it just doesn't work. Or <laughs> when you have too many spices, yikes. Yeah. Exactly that. I, mean, I have a Geist, I have a Noose, I have some of that toolkit that I need. Is that card a Nourish? And if it is, do I coin a Keysmith and Threaten Counter spell? 
That cat could very well be an Orish. But I might also need to coin the Geist. Yeah, I think going with the going with the Keysmith is not strong enough. It's probably an Orish, but I don't think I can help it. No, he runs Kickling Inventor. Oh, come on. Everyone has the Kickling Inventor. I didn't think everyone would run the Kickling Inventor. I, I need to keep start saving the Blood Knight a little bit more. I mean, like Druid. Do you expect Druid to run Giggling Inventor? I certainly do not. Why does he hold on to the Divine Shield? Strange things going on. This could also be just a Kelas at turn. Maybe I don't need to coin the Geist. But what if he plays the Florist this turn? Well, then I need to coin the Flame Strike anyway. This was correct. Because if he plays Florist this turn, I will have to coin the Flame Strike to kill it. I still don't quite know what this druid is all about. But I guess it's Malagos. Need to take away the spell stones. Two naturalizes. Is it a talk waggle? It could be talk waggle. With two naturalizes. So he's looking for the florist to discount talk waggle or Azalina. That's what what is currently going on. I just need to flame strike that minion. Looks dogwaggle to me right now. Looks very dogwagglish. Looks very, very dogwagglish to me. Although I guess it can also be Malagos. Dog Mali. Yeah, it could be. It could also be a duel. That's true. So far, I played one of my big spells. I need more to make Alana worthwhile. And just drop a blizzard here. I just need to play more spells so that I can get more dragons from Alana. I don't have a lot of time to do that. Now he gets the UI. Hmm, only loses a giggling inventor. That's a moonfire that he has in his hand. So now we know that thing too. He's contemplating whether it's worth discarding another card. Only six cards left in the deck, so... He has not found all the pieces. Because he feels the need to throw a moonfire away. So a meteor that one. Play a tyrant. With one moonfire out of the way, there might be ways for me to survive. But then there's still the talk waggle combo. How do I survive that? I've now played three of the big spells. I need to play the Alana now, right? But he still has one more spreading plague left. I still have to play the Alana now. I need to pressure his life total. But he has a spreading plague left. So he's going to play a spreading plague. Together with with what? Swipe doesn't do that much, to be honest.
with branching pads. Interesting choice. Well, then a swipe will, of course, be much better. Double swipe, for example, can clear my minions then. But if he uses double swipe, then... Uh, well, he can still talk waggle his way. Yeah. Still need to go for this. The Serenite Chain Gang and the Key Smith. Frozen Clone. But Togwiggle is not going to be the next minion. Mirror Entity. You go for the Entity and ping there. Two copies of Togwiggle. Togwiggle is not going to be the next minion he plays. That is going to be the next minion he plays. Because he needs to play Mali before Dog Waggle. I don't absolutely have to Flame Strike. I can Polymorph and Ping to. How much damage do I have? 15, 21, 28. He has two swipes left, so he can kill this next turn, but I don't have to flame strike yet. What if he just has the cheap Mali? I think this is still the line I'm taking here. I mean, what if he has Floop? That's a 4 mana Malikos. Then he can play Malikos and swipe. But with Malikos swipe... He can barely kill my Malikos. But I can still flame strike away his Malikos, second Malikos, even after that. I can also Dragon's Fury it away. Maybe there is no Top Waggle. Dragon's Fury is guaranteed kill on this. Yes, please. Let's get that kill on that. And play Elise. So I can kill his second melee because he has swipe left for damage. But now, does he have the Togwaggle? He hasn't had a Florist, so... There are no good Togwaggle plays. Maybe it is just pure Mali. Oh, a Lich King. That's a good Lich King. That's a good Artificer, though. Obviously, you have to Flame Strike. Kill the Lich King, but yeah, life could still be better. I'm out of cards. He's out of cards. He has one Lich King card. If it's like Frostmourne, that's huge. No spreading plagues. He has one Arcane Tyrant. He can play the Arcane Tyrant here. I bring life. Oh, and he has Alex. Oh no. Alex goes face, I go down to 14. Then he can have 8 from hand. That's not quite enough to kill me. So I need to play the Sinbragosa. And I need to ping one of these. So that he can't use a mind control deck if he has one of those. So Alex is not lethal. He doesn't have Spreading Plagues, he doesn't have Spell Stones, he doesn't have Naturalizes. 
it's still close. Surprisingly close. So he has a swipe. But that's not enough. He's dead on board. Right, he takes 2 fatigue damage. That's 11, 12, 13, 14. Right, he was just dead on board. No. What I, what I really want is the Dragon's Fury. There's my Dragon's Fury, and there's my Jaina. So we have some tools to contest a potential zoo. Or a potential control warlock as well, thanks to that opening hand Jaina. Okay, he kept one card, right? So there could be coin, heal, happy ghoul. I guess he's contemplating that right now. But opts not to go for it. Maybe he can go with Maybe he can go with something stronger. It won't be until five that the Dragon's Fury comes online. So I need to survive until then. And even stuff like pinging a light warden can be scary. Because if you ping a light warden, uh, then they might just heal it up next turn. And then you're in trouble again. Even in more trouble because you give them more healing opportunities. But of course it can also be control. That is yet to be determined. But it's this build. And as I mentioned about pinging the light warden, so we're pinging away the other minions so that he has fewer targets that he can heal. Then the next question will be next turn, Keysmith or Scout? Probably going with the Keysmith. Or I could also go with the Ping here. Now I can simply go with the Serenite Chain Gang. This is good. It's also very good because it conserves my health total. I mean, he can coin a fungal mancer here, so that he can push through these. But if he has that, then his board still forced the Dragon's Fury. And if he doesn't have that, then there might be other things that his board will fall to. Interesting line. Do I commit the Dragon's Fury? Do I not? Am I going to take Light Warden hit to the face? I think I don't. I think I'm being more creative with the Dragon's Fury than this. I'll go with the. I'll go with the Vaporize option here. This should be fine. He can still get a hit with the Light Warden. Not a whole lot I can do about that. If he buffs these with the Fungal Mancer, and I roll Polymorph. Now, I think this is still an acceptable position. Alter Hero. Hi, I really hate this deck. You mean Big Spell Mage? Or do you mean Zoo? Which one do you hate? Well, this will force the Dragon's Fury. And I don't have another tool for next turn yet. There's a top deck Dragon's Fury. I'll just slam that immediately. He will know it was the top deck. So it gives him the sense that okay, he just played his top deck here. Big spell witch, okay. Yeah, I think I think I've found a pretty good list. I'll I'll be working on this a fair bit. Now he feels like he can afford to go wide. I still have the Vaporize in place, so the maximum damage I'm taking is something like 7. 
I think I don't have to spend the second Dragon Sphere yet. I think I would rather draw a card. Let's try this. Hi, Expert Cirque. Because I don't have any other AoE spells in hand yet. So I'll try to conserve the AoE spell for a turn. I'd also draw more cards to give me a better chance to find more AoE. That Solarium was obviously pretty good. But now we got one Vaporize, so even if I roll the Polymorph from the Dragon's Fury, I can still guarantee success. Alternatively, I could Meteor here, hit there, and be done with this board. With the Kellas at start and give him 4 force. Then again, I can Dragon's Fury this board, and then I can play Jaina next turn. I can probably afford Jaina next turn. That seems likely, at least. So now, even if I roll the Polymorph, it's still a board clear. He's going to rebuild again. Both chain gangs are gone, but the doubling imps are still there. He might even be able to get a Doom Guard turn here. But I think Doom Guard turn is not that intimidating with Jaina coming down. And these are just perfectly acceptable. We haven't seen any fungal mancers yet. The fungal mancers these. It's still fine. It's still fine with the Jaina. It's still fine even through a fungal mancer. Get that extra armor, that health gain from the water elemental. Water elemental doesn't even die to soul fire, plus the despicable dreadlord effect. And this is already the second Despicable Dreadlord, so there's not like Dreadlord into Soul Fire type of stuff. He simply cannot kill this Water Elemental. Without hitting it, of course. Does any thoughts on Megatune decks? I wrote an article on Megatune decks recently. So, yeah, I, ha I do have some thoughts on those. So this one is going to be the Artificer Intermediate here. In to ping that to make a water elemental, in to freeze that. And that's pretty solid. Yes, that's a win. So I keep the Glutonosus. If it's Sword Rogue, with Glutonosus I can delay those tug plays to get my Dragon's Fury online. That's the goal here. None will survive. Both the Blood Knight and the Elise got a lot of work done in the game, by the way. And it is, indeed, the infamous Wood Rogue. Okay. Nothing on one. Does it mean that it's going to be Coin Fledgling now? He kept his entire, almost his entire hand. So he should have a really good hand. I'll need to use this now, because in the early game I need to buy time. So that I can get my board clears online. And deny that tug play. That's the important thing here. Okay. Amazing. That is quite amazing. Nice 6-6. Six, six. I can kill it next turn with the Dragon's Fury. This turn I just need to prevent him from getting good wide board. I might also just kill it with these, but it's probably going to be with the Dragon's Fury. Then I can play double Arcane Tyrants on the board as well. He tri- what? Why do you trade? But if I play Elise first, then Dragon's Fury could deal just 2 damage. I still need to Dragon's Fury. And play the Tyrants. 
But why does he trade? He just... Oh, why? He still has plenty of cards. Seven cards in hand. That's a lot of cards. Comes the other like eagle. <laughs> this is almost too funny. What do you say to this little rogue? <laughs> this is why the card is in the deck. This is why the card is in the deck. He can have a one drop and a wild spawn slayer. He can he can answer this. There are technically ways for him to answer this. But it kind of does make one wonder. No wild spawn then. Thirteen seventeen. Well, if he didn't have one drop and wild spawn slayer now, he's unlikely to have it next turn. If I push 17 to face, he goes down to 9. Yeah, that sounds good. Let me go with the freeze on the tug and just hit him in the face. And let's see if he has an answer now. Because it's not even enough to kill just this. He needs to do something more because there's an, another 9 on the board right here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.